going on people today's video what are we doing and what are we talking about so today's video is going to be awesome because this is a very 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 cool update that i have on one of the projects that i've been working on so in a previous video i talked to you guys about a very unique security adapter developers use this adapter when they were going to reveal or demonstrate some new hardware that they were working on shows like space world 99 uh, e3 that type of thing and this adapter was used as a security feature to just make sure that the game that was being demonstrated or shown uh, was not going to fall into the wrong hands and they would require this very special little adapter in order to allow the game to boot properly now again i was talking about how my plans were to try and reverse engineer this board and replicate it as there was an altera max 7000 cpld on this device and uh, now i've done a lot of work and i've collected a lot of the hardware that was used for these older altera cplds in particular there's a system that was released by altera called the master programming unit or mpu this was a system that had various different adapters that you could insert on the top and it would allow you to interface to many different Altera brand devices and allow you to program them, erase them, run diagnostics. So it was very, very sophisticated and, you know, devoted specifically for Altera devices. And now I had acquired one of these and it's a, a, an old unit that was uh, released in the 90s. A lot of the time, these older Altera Max devices came with a JTAG interface. A lot of the time, what would happen would be developers would program something onto these chips, they would actually disable the JTAG lines after it was programmed, and they could use those as extra input-output connection lines. So, you know, when you think about it, that's essentially, once you program it, it then goes in and configures those pins for the JTAG interface to be used for additional input-output feeds. And so you're essentially burning the bridge behind you and uh, it does not allow the JTAG to be used again after that point. Well, this particular hardware could go in and reset those JTAG lines, which then re-enables the device to be used for JTAG programming. And that's ISP, right? In-service programming or in-system programming. So it's a very unique device. The plan from the beginning was to use this special programming system to interface to the security adapter. And my process was, you know, non-invasive methods, plate of spaghetti wires all over the place with this interfaced on a, a breadboard. And, you know, I managed to hook up all the lines that I needed uh, to interface to the master programming unit. And I managed to successfully download the firmware that was on this device. So what this means is that there was a lock bit in there, a security bit feature on these CPLDs, and it was not set. So what that means is it just allows me to download the information that was stored on there. It's like a firmware uh, that's being implemented there and all the different logic, the fuses that have been you know, set inside this logic device are essentially able to be downloaded. And so this is exciting because it means that I can now use the firmware file that I downloaded and I'm able to replicate the chip onto a blank device. So this is really exciting because it means that it's going to allow us to try and replicate these little security adapters. Just, you know, a cool project to tackle and see if it's possible. You know, and, and then I had gone and done some research online looking for information on this. And to my surprise, uh, Marshall, the developer of the 64 drive, of course, <laughs> if, if there's N64 related reverse engineering work, uh, Marshall has done it all. And anyway, Marshall had gone in and he had actually scanned one of these uh, security adapters with a logic analyzer while it was being run. He was able to, you know, go in and decipher which addresses were being accessed which were being written to, information being sent in from the adapter to the console or to the memory of the system. So in turn, what this meant is that with this information that Marshall had collected, uh, people were able to go in and patch uh, certain ROMs that had this security feature put in place and where they required this little security dongle in order to boot properly. 
So they were able to go in and patch uh, the ROM and play the games from these cartridges that had been dumped. One cartridge in particular was the N64 prototype flash cartridge for Conker's Bad Fur Day. And so this was a big deal at the time and uh, they were able to download it and play it on the system. So now for me to move forward with this, it's, it's super exciting that, it, that I managed to download the firmware from this CPLD. But now in order for me to actually test this, so in order to validate that the dump was successful, I still have to replicate the board. So I've got to reverse engineer the layout of the board. And then what I will do is I will program the firmware file onto a blank Altera Max 7000 device, and then essentially try to boot this uh, ROM that was uh, downloaded. Now, what's interesting is that the cartridge in question that had this security feature in place was Conker's Bad Fur Day. However, it's a 512 megabit cartridge. So this is, we're talking 64 megabytes. And so those cartridges are not that common and they're very hard to come by. So that, that's gonna be the next step for me is to, uh, you know, chances are probably what's more likely what I will do is I will uh, set up a board and, and I will send the board out to the owner of the 512 uh, megabit flash cartridge and get them to test it uh, on their system. It's, you know, it's a little more cumbersome whereas I have all the hardware, you know, if I could quickly test something, but again, these 512 megabit flash cartridges for the N64 are not that common. So, really exciting uh, in this reverse engineering project. Uh, really, really cool and I'm excited to continue and moving forward with that. But again, this was an update and I wanted to share that information with you guys. So, pretty awesome. Okay, so I'm excited. This is such an awesome week. All this, so many cool things have happened and making a lot of progress with a few things. So uh, I'm excited and I'm really excited to share these next pieces with you guys. So these are some, this is some development gear that I got again from my buddy, Andrew. Andrew has such an amazing collection of development gear for different systems. It's super awesome. And he is really, really cool about uh, letting me borrow some pieces from him and the different kits that he has. And it's giving me a chance to share and demo some of this gear with you guys. So the gear that I have today, this is really awesome. So for those of you that are into uh, game uh, music development or sound effects development uh, for different systems, I've got a couple of really cool MIDI interface cartridges. These are development cartridges that allow you to interface the MIDI protocol and the MIDI connectors that is very common and popular that, uh, within music development. And so you use that with sequencers and that type of thing. Or uh, as an example, you'll have different types of keyboards and that use MIDI. So this, if you guys can see this is kind of big to try and get in the shot. Uh, but this is just like a, a standard, uh, you know, synthesizer keyboard. And on the back of these, they have what's called a MIDI interface. So if you can see that there. And what that does is it allows you to interface uh, a special type of connector that, uh, is an, that uses an accepted protocol in all types of synthesizers, sequencers. And so using a standard cable, this is like a DIN connector, and you can plug that in to a you know, piece of equipment like a synthesizer or uh, a keyboard and you can then interface it to these cartridges. So, so now I'm gonna show you these cartridges. They're for a few different platforms. Now these again, I borrowed from my buddy Andrew and I'm gonna be demoing these and doing a, a hardware demo of all these. So to start, this is a MIDI cartridge, a development MIDI cartridge for the Nintendo Game Boy Advance. And so if you guys can see that there, I'll probably throw up an image of it just so you can see it a little better. Now I had talked about these in the past when I did a video for the Intelligent Systems AGB emulator uh, development unit along with an AGB capture device. This was equipment that was released by Intelligent Systems for use when developing games for the Game Boy Color and the Game Boy Advance. And so now this cartridge here, I briefly talked about it in that demo 
and you apparently use this cartridge and you can interface it to the AGB emulator unit and you can then interface the keyboard, the musical keyboard using that MIDI connector uh, or you could also interface a, a sequencer. Uh, and what that does is it allows you to test uh, different samples that you've set up as part of your game and the development that you're doing for the Game Boy Color or the Game Boy Advance. And it allows you to test that and to sample those sound effects or the sound samples in real time. So that's really cool. So it allows you to preview and check and make sure that everything's running the way you want. But this feature is a pretty awesome little little unit for people that are working and developing music for the system. So they could then you know try and test different things in real time to make sure that it sounds the way that they want. So that's the one cartridge there and that is for the Game Boy Advance. Okay, so I got a couple more that I wanna show you guys. Super cool. These, I'm excited to show these. So this cartridge here, if you guys can see that there. This is the Intelligent Systems Nitro UIC MIDI development cartridge for the Nintendo DS. You have a USB interface as well as the MIDI uh, connector for uh, hooking up your you know, keyboard or if you're using a sequencer uh, that runs that MIDI protocol. Uh, that's the connector there, same as on the Game Boy Advance cartridge. It also comes with a special uh, flash cartridge uh, with some software on there. So that's a very unique uh, little cartridge there. And it has a special software in there that allows you to use this device and allow you to test and develop your uh, MIDI samples and uh, different sequences uh, in real time on the device and allows you to preview those sounds and make sure that everything is running correctly. So that's a pretty cool unit. And the next one I have is yet another very rare uh, device. This is the Partner CTR UIC MIDI development cartridge for the Nintendo 3DS. So pretty cool, pretty rare, as you guys can see it there. And as well, just like the others, it has, you have a, a USB interface as well as the five pin DIN connector for running all of your uh, MIDI uh, hardware, whether it be a keyboard or uh, a sequencer, that type of thing. And again, allowing you to preview uh, in real time the sounds and samples that you have uh, as part of that music development or even sound effects development. So pretty cool. I do plan on demoing these and doing a full in depth hardware demo to show you guys how these systems work and uh, super exciting wow so cool just such amazing uh, really really cool dev gear uh, one thing that i am working on just quickly to share uh, is just something cool like i you know i was starting to look at my channel I'm like what is my channel what are, what am i here what am i doing you know and really it boils down to is just entertainment like i'm showing you guys different pieces of equipment demoing how it works you know and it's primarily just entertainment you know cool videos wow it's awesome you know, it's not uh, necessarily full crazy tutorials uh, that I'm doing, but uh, I figured it's just to show and share something cool and interesting that you guys would, you know, enjoy watching. So one of the things that I've been looking at doing is using some of my robotics and the different industrial robotic arm units that I have. And so the plan, I and I've talked about this before, I talked about it a little bit in the tour of my lab. You guys were able to see a couple of the robotic systems I had and some of the plans that I had in there was to use the robotic arm to, you know, load a game cartridge uh, into a unit and then, you know, potentially play a game and just do like a game uh, demo. And so one of the things that I'm planning on doing is using a QR code scanner. I will have a binder with a list of different games that I have and each game would have a QR code beside it. So you just sort of flip through this manual and say, oh, I want to play this game. So you would, I would actually scan this QR code. Now I'm going to show this to you briefly, very quickly. Okay, so I'll see. If, I'm going to see if I can get this in the shot here. So this here, this is an industrial QR code scanner. So this is something that you would see in like a factory and this type of industrial scanner would be up on a little tripod kind of a thing beside a conveyor belt. And as the products were going by, it would have the ability to scan uh, the different product QR codes and then, you know, be like position tracking essentially. 
So anyway, my plan, I got this really cheap. You know, it was it's an old unit, but it's got the computer interface here and it responds to standard RS-232 commands. So I wrote a little bit of Python code where I was actually able to go in and uh, communicate with this device. And I'm able to encode uh, some of the data into a QR code that I generate using a standard QR code generator software or even an app and I can put in a key sort of designation in there. And then this device, along with my Python code, I am gonna be able to extract the information that I need from the QR code to identify the title of the game. And then that information gets fed into my robotic system where I'm gonna have the robotic unit completely automated. We'll go and pick up uh, an N64 cartridge of the title that matches the QR code and then we'll unload and then dock that into the N64 console and allow the system to boot up. So it's gonna be like just a really kind of cool, visually awesome uh, setup that I'm gonna put together with some robotics. And at the same time, I'm still sort of mixing it with, you know, some games, just something cool to try. And I thought you guys might get a kick out of that. And uh, anyway, so that's something I'm working on, which is kind of neat. And, uh, you know, again, there's still so many pieces of development equipment that I've acquired and I'm just so psyched to demo them and uh, dive in. And uh, I'm working on one right now. It's uh, it's very close and I'm excited to share that with you guys. So it's going to be fun. So I think that's it guys. That's a wrap for today. I want to give a huge shout out to all my supporters that have joined. And uh, recently I have a new supporter. His name's Jim. So Jim, a big shout out to you, bud. Uh, thanks for becoming one of my uh, devoted supporters. I really, really appreciate that support and it does help me continue to make these cool, awesome videos. So again, a huge shout out to the supporters and to all my followers. Really, really appreciate it. And so that's a wrap, guys. Uh, thanks again for watching. Hit the like and subscribe if you can. It's always appreciated. And we will see you in the next video. Take it easy and bye for now. Ciao.